everyone, Brian Fallon here, and I'm back with another video. And today we're going to take a look at shadow credentials. So what are shadow credentials? Shadow credentials are when you can push a key into a system or a user account and then authenticate to it. It sounds crazy, but it is entirely possible. We're going to use a tool called Whisker to do this today. But to make sure that you have the right permissions to do this in Active Directory, you need to have a specific user group attached to the user that you've compromised. In this case, if you're looking through Bloodhound scans and you have found a user with the key admins group, you'll then be able to do this attack. But let's take a look at Clint here, our typical victim. And if we just do net user clint.barton, and then we go domain, we will see he is part of enterprise key admins and key admins, right? Outside of that, he's just a domain user, right? He may be a local administrator. You're gonna probably want him to be a local administrator for this attack to work, or at least escalated to an admin somewhere in the network to make this attack work. But let's go ahead and we'll clear it now. And we're just gonna use Whisker. So we will use Whisker to add a credential to our target. So we're going to do whisker.exe add target 2016 lab DC dollar and domain hacklab.com. Now before we get started here, I'm going to do this entire demo with Defender on. Now I've obfuscated some of these other tools, right? I've obfuscated Rubius. If you're interested in seeing how I obfuscated Rubius, check out my other video on defeating Defender. I'm going to use that particular version that I made for that video for this video. Also, I'm going to use a funky version of Mimi Cats uh, that has been used uh, through a loader. And that loader, I just changed the name of it and loaded it through this loader. And the, it's called Hawan Loader. And it's fully encrypted and, and Defender just doesn't see it. It will grab it on behavior. Probably later in the demo, you may hear it grab it. But it is very much slipping right by Defender, all these tools, and they're executables. So we're not using PowerShell in this demo. I know I typically use PowerShell as a weapon. I'll use AMZ Bypass. But in this one, we've just obfuscated and loaded our way around AV. And just to prove that, let's take a look. And you can see real-time protection completely on here. So we're going to run this whole demo with it on. So like I said, Whisker almost never gets detected. I don't know why. Nobody flags this as a tool. I think this, this is still a little bit theoretical to a lot of people. So it's not being flagged as a serious tool at this point. But one of the really cool things about Whisker is it gives us the output we need from Rubius to run it. So all I have to do, run this tool. And there it is, it's generated a certificate. And notice it says, now we just take Rubius and do ask TGT the user, the certificate that we created and attached to that account, the password, and the domain, and the domain controller, and then get credential show. Now this is important because it gives us the NTLM hash that we need to do the next step in the attack. Next step in the attack is to overpass the hash. So we'll take everything from here all the way down to here, and we're going to copy that, right? And I'm not going to use Rubius Rubius. I'm going to use my version of Rubius, Hagrid. Hagrid is my obfuscated version from my Defeating Defender video. And if you're interested in how this works, check it out. But we'll take Hagrid and we'll paste everything. Oh, I did it twice. Let me clear that out. We'll go back to Hagrid here. We want it once, not twice. And now what we're going to do is we're going to use Hagrid to get this TGT. And there we go. There's Rubius. And you can see it looks a little weird because I've obfuscated it. But that gives me the NTLM hash of the domain controller computer account. Now that means we can set up DC sync. If I have the NTLM hash of the domain controller account, I can set up DC sync, but first I need a ticket, right? So let's use our obfuscated version of Mimi Cats to generate that. We're going to use mini dogs. 
So we'll take our mini dogs.exe and we're going to run that. And notice it's doing a lot of loading, but there it is, Mimi Cats, right there. And we'll do privilege. Privilege debug. And then what we're going to do now is our overpass the hash. So we're going to take, and I'm going to copy and paste this in just to be, make sure I get the hash right. But you'll take the hash that you got from the output of Rubius, which this is the NTLM hash over here, 62211. That is the NTLM hash, our domain, our user, and then you're going to do sec URL say pass the hash. So what we're doing here is an overpass the hash, and I'll show how to catch that here in a minute. There's multiple ways to catch this particular chat attack chain. This is one of the better ones because overpass the hash has a really interesting signature. So let's take, and there we go. We've overpassed the hash. And what it does now is I have a Kerberos ticket from the domain controller, right? So if I go K list in here somewhere, well, not in that window, it'll be over here, uh, but I don't feel like messing with that too much, but we can do that. Just, just, no, I have to get out of meaning cats. If I do K list here, you can see in here, we have LDAP 2016 lab DC right there, right? So that means I now have a ticket from the domain controller as the domain controller, which is really cool, right? I've got a Kerberos ticket of the domain controller living on my host here. So I've overpassed the hash, right? So now that I've overpassed the hash, I want to set up DC sync. I want to be able to get the user accounts out that I want. In particular, I want the KRB TGT account, right? Because I want to set up golden ticket, something like that. So what we'll do now, we will CD into our desktop one more time. So CDC colon backslash Clint up oh. users backslash Clint. Clint, then desktop. And back to mini dogs. And there we go. There's meme cats one more time. And this time we'll do privilege dash dash debug. And then we're going to do LSA dump colon colon DC sync our domain, which is hacklab.com. And then we'll do user krbtgt, right? So I want the krbtgd account, the hash for it. And there it is. So here is the hash of the krbtgt account. This sets me up for golden ticket. Now I can even use this Mimi Cats that I'm here, I've created here for this golden ticket. But in this case, I would typically build the tip, ticket offline, bring it back in. I wouldn't try to do it right here, right? It's a good way to get caught. Uh, so let's just do a full DC sync. If I just do user, oh, and defender ate it, like I mentioned earlier. Defender will eat it on the behavior, but I already have everything I need. I've got the hash, I've got all of the stuff that I need. This attack was completely successful. I could, if I wanted to, I could literally just copy it back down. Defender won't know it. It will run again over and over and over again. Uh, it's just a weird behavioral detection that it does and it'll eat it. But fully successful attack, right? Very cool. So how do we detect this? How do we stop this from happening? So if we pop over here to our elastic sim and we go to alerts, I've set up a couple of rules here. Uh, in particular, the first one is overpass the hash behavior, right? Overpass the hash has a very, very specific signature. Now it can be prone to false positives sometimes. So you want to be careful in how you configure this. Some tools out there will do this same behavior that Meaning Cats does. And in doing so, they will throw your SIM off, right? It'll be something like a land management utility or something that's doing weird ticket behavior will do this particular action. 
But what we have here for our rule is we have event code 4624, and we log on event type log on type 9. Now that type 9 is very strange. It's not a normal login type. It's not something you see every day. We also have the logon process name of sec logo and the target linked login ID of 0x0. It will always be that. So if we take this and copy it out, and we'll just hop over into Kibana and do the query from the rule. And we'll just do this query. We can see we're going to have a few of these logs because, well, I've done this attack a few times. But if I pop over here and I open it up and you take a look at the log message, this is what you will see. We can see Clint Barton here. We can see Hack Lab. But the strange thing that we see is this sec logo and the login type of nine. So that is the overpass, right? We caught the overpass. Now we also want to be able to catch the key credential link being attached to the account. So I set up another rule for that. And if we take a look here at our alerts, I have key credential added to domain controller. Now in this case, you will need a list of what your domain controllers are. Uh, you don't want to just try to run this based on everything. Right. Any, especially if you use Windows Hello in your environment, you will explode if you create this rule and you haven't targeted it well. So make sure you're targeting it well. You want to make sure it's only for your domain controllers that you care about. Uh, let's take a look here. And our event code is 5136 and win log event data attributes LDAP. Uh, Display name, MSDS key credential link, and when log event data subject username 2016 lab DC dollar. So that's the name of my lab DC. So I can copy this and then I will go over to Kibana one more time and we'll pull this query out. And you can see here it is. We have done this a couple of times. But if you take a look here at the event, what you're going to see is you're going to see the MSDS key credential linkage to the domain controller. So a key was attached to the domain controller with this event. You can see your DN here. This is your domain controller. Your class is computer. Your Active Directory domain services, hacklab.com and then your login ID and the account name, right? The account name is what you want to pay the most attention to. In this case, the account name should be the name of your domain controller, so you can build your rule with a lookup table, and that will give you the ability to find this anytime it happens to a domain controller. Still, this happening in your environment in general isn't great, but DC Sync is off the table if they can't get this into your domain controllers. So uh, take a look at that. This is a, definitely a good event to alert on if you're worried about shadow credentials in your environment. And that is basically it. Thank you guys once again for watching. Uh, and I will leave you with Hack the Planet to defend better.